Hey guys, welcome back to another Lords Mobile video. I'm Alphafish, and today we're going to be talking about uh, castle layout. All right. So I've been getting a lot of questions, especially from my newer members, uh, about uh, Hey Alpha, what what? How many uh, how many barracks do I need? You know, how many infirmaries should I have? Uh, is it good to do nothing but manners so I can uh, train uh, train troops quickly? So, um, with, with barracks, you only need two barracks, all right? Especially when you get them leveled up, because realistically, I mean, you can do like four or five days worth of troop training, like every five days, but that's, that's like overkill, that's ridiculous. No one needs to train that many troops at a time, right? Um, the only reason I could see anyone doing that is if they're trying to mass produce troops and they're speeding everything up. But even then, like, you don't need to do five days of troops. That's a little excessive. Um, two barracks is pretty much the standard that everyone uses is just two. You can easily get, like, uh, usually, usually you can get about one to two days worth of troops training uh, with two barracks. Unless you have them both maxed out like me, then you can actually get like a few days. Like I think I can get three days worth of tier four uh, trained with two barracks. So um, like it, it's it's fine. It's fine. Like you only need two. Um, as far as infirmaries, I recommend eight infirmaries. Of course, you're gonna have to get one to twenty-five, so you can upgrade your castle to twenty-five. But the rest of them. If you can just get them to 24, uh, you can exceed 250,000 troops, which is one army at uh, max castle and um, uh, five gold heroes. So it's 100, 250 troops. So you want to be able to store one army's worth of troops in your infirmaries at minimum, okay? So that way, if you're doing something and your troops get wiped out, at least they're all injured and not dead, okay? So uh, eight infirmaries is what I recommend, especially if you're free to play. And the reason I don't recommend more infirmaries is because manners are good to have for training speed, all right? They do produce gold, but uh, training speed is very important uh, with constant growth for any castle, regardless of free to play or how much money you spend, okay? So uh, I have seven manors, all right? I have seven, they're all at 25, although um, most, you're fine at 24 really, unless you have the spare gems for the golden hammers to upgrade them to 25, then I recommend doing that for the extra training speed, right? For end game purposes. So um, this is the balance that I, that I recommend for uh, this section of your castle. So two barracks, eight infirmaries, and seven manors, all right? That is what I recommend. For um, resources, if you only have one account, you don't have, you don't have uh, hypers, like hyper accounts that massively produce one resource, you will need a balance of your resources okay because depending on what growth period you're at with your castle you will sometimes you will need more ore sometimes you'll need more wood than the other resources sometimes stone and if you're unlucky gold because like gold is heavily needed towards end game so uh, gold is a completely different topic though uh, you can uh, you you can hyper gold but I recommend making a second account to do that because you want a ton of manners and you want them upgraded. Uh, you want to be able to use shields on that castle because some uh, a lot of players will come steal your gold if you don't. So it's like a huge pain in the in the rear. Okay. So, um, but as far as like one castle goes with balancing your resources, uh, so these these buildings. All right, they all produce their resources at different speeds, even maxed out. Uh, as you can see, um, farms produce 38,000 an hour, okay? 
38,000 an hour. And then second fastest is stone. Stone produces 30,000 per hour. And if I remember right, wood should be slightly less. Okay, 3056. And are they the same? Okay, so they're the same. All right, 30,560. So wood and stone are the same, although stone is not needed as much as wood. All right, wood you will use a lot more than stone, especially when it comes to upgrading infirmaries because it's, it's like for, uh, for going from level 24 to 25, you need like 14 million wood for one building. And if you have eight, that's a large chunk, right? That's like, that's over 100 mil, 100 million wood. So uh, make sure that you are using the cargo ship to stock up on your resources. So don't, when you go to the cargo ship, don't waste your resources here. Uh, I recommend either doing three star um, trades or if you can get like uh, wood for wood or stone for stone, I recommend doing those because you can easily deplete uh, resources in your bag without really meaning to, all right? And you won't even notice it until later on when you need something from your bag and you're like, whoa, how do I only have 30, 30 million left in my bag? It's because you've been trading it on cargo ship. Because cargo ship is random and uh, some some resources pop up in here more often than others. So it's really easy to deplete one type of resource from your bag, all right? So be really careful with that. So as far as these buildings go, um, ore is the slowest. So remember, stone and wood had 30,000 per hour at max, all right? This only has 22,000 at max, all right? So you're obviously going to need more mines than you need lumber, and rock quarries, all right? As far as food goes, if you're building troops, you don't need more than one farm. Just one farm so you can uh, get the upgrades done for your other buildings, all right? Just one farm uh, to level up with your castle. Don't worry about food yet, all right? You won't need to worry about food as long as you can trade in the cargo ship to get food. You don't have to worry about food unless you unlock tier four, and then I recommend making a food hyper account so you can feed yourself food to train your tier four because they need a lot of food and to heal too so uh, don't worry about food unless you unlock tier four which will take you a long time as free to play it's possible because i have tier four unlocked but it's it, it takes a long time to do it uh... so back to the resource buildings one farm uh... i recommend having four lumber yards and four rock quarries as you can see I have four of both of those, so two, three, four rock quarries, and then my lumber yards I have one, two, three, and four, all right? So after you get four lumber yards, four quarries, and one farm, just put the rest as ore, all right? and or even with the excessive amount of mines for ore, you will still have a slower production of ore than you will with wood and stone. Even if you go into your talents and you max out the productions, you will still make more stone and more wood than you will ore. That's just the way the game is, okay? But doing this for ore will give you the maximum amount that you can, you know, like, uh, it'll give you a good amount of production for these to keep your bag stocked on resources, okay? So make sure you are you have a good balance with your resource buildings. And if you go to your castle, I'm not going to click on it because I don't want to give away personal account information, but if you click on your castle, you can scroll down and look at your resources and how much you your castle produces per hour and when you look at that you can tar like you can figure out which resources produce the slowest and then you can go up here in, into your talents and you can put points all the way at the bottom into these productions 
to kind of even out the hourly production of each resource, which will really help your castle. Like, it'll help you get a good amount of resources. You'll still probably have to ask resources from your uh, guild members or friends every once in a while, or your guild bank, but you won't really be, you won't be hurting for resources. You understand? Like, you won't be desperate for resources if you are doing this, okay? This is how I raised all of my accounts before I converted some of my accounts into hypers. I had them built just like this, and they did just fine. Only reason I converted them to hypers is so I could support the tier, uh, the tier 4 uh, training and healing on my main account. Okay, so if you only have one account, do this. It really helps, all right? So um, that's, that's that for uh, resources. We're going to come over here to these buildings. Um, these buildings here... Um, There, you can only have one of each, all right? You can only have one of each. You you can't have duplicates of them at all. But they require special uh, resources to uh, upgrade, which will end up costing you gems. So uh, what I would start with is the treasure trove, number one. And then after you max the treasure trove out, go over to battle hall, max out battle hall. And then after you max your battle hall, then work on prison. All right, prison is going to be third. And the reason that is is because you need a level 17 prison to build the altar. You probably know this by now, if, whether you have an altar or not. So make sure you fully, just fully upgrade this, all right? It's going to cost you some gems either way, no matter what order you do it. But this way, it's kind of easier to, to remember. So uh, prison, third and then alter fourth all right so do it in that order um, as far as upgrades for the resource buildings you need you're going to need one of each to fully upgrade so you can upgrade your other buildings all right it's a prerequisite it's required to upgrade your other buildings all right so choose four of them to max out at all times and then your other ones i'd say get them up to at least level 10 if you need to increase your production, if you notice that you are slow, like you're using up all of your resources and you're starting to dip into your bag more often, start leveling these buildings up, all right? But don't level them up all the way because it'll take away from construction time that you can be using to push your castle to 25, all right? So uh, make sure you do get these up decently. And eventually you'll get, you'll be able to max them out. Like you see, like, I don't have all of them maxed out, but I also have hypers that I feed myself resources, so it's kind of pointless for me to upgrade them with golden hammers, which some of them I have upgraded, but that's, bes <laughs> that's besides the point. So, um, golden hammers will cost you a chunk of gems. They're very expensive, so that's why I haven't finished doing that, because I'm saving my gems for other things. Um, as far as familiars go, I can't stress this enough. Familiars are for end game, all right? So, end game stuff right here. The In the beginning, if you want to get an early start on familiars, which most people do, I know I did, like I got an early start on familiars, uh, I recommend going after Aquarius and Territe because Aquarius has the skill refresh that gives you stamina, which will help with your, the development of your heroes and oops, Territe, didn't mean to exit out of it completely, uh, Territe gives you Netherquake which stocks you up on fragments. So when you go into familiars later on you have tons of fragments for uh, upgrading skills, alright? But the reason I say familiars is endgame is because all of the benefits that the familiars give you are very small benefit. If you're newer to this game, you don't have ev your castle is highly undeveloped. There is so much stuff in research, construction, so many percentages and and stat bonuses that you can get that are way better than familiars. All right, familiars is for just pushing your castle a little bit further after you have all of this other stuff done. And the reason I say not to work on it now is because it will drain your resources. It'll drain your bag 
to where you have no resources, all right? Merging packs is very expensive when it comes to resources, okay? So make sure you're saving this for end game. You can set it up all you want. You can merge a couple packs, you know, a couple times a day with a little bit of resources. What I recommend is when you come into here to your guild quest and admin quest and you click accept or collect for all of these, just immediately go over to your spire and merge packs, okay? Use up those resources, especially if you have troops. Your troops will eat that eat that food, right? So that food's going to go to waste anyway. So you might as well go use it, come into your spire and merge packs with that little bit of food that you got from uh, uh, collecting your guild and admin quest. So you can do that three times a day. You can do it morning, you can do it at like uh, noon or early evening, and then you can do it at night. So that'll give you a good amount of packs towards Aquarius and Territe. Uh, as far as the buildings themselves go, um, really you just need one spire, one gem. Uh, monster hold I think you can only have one of. I don't see the point of having multiple monster holds anyway. Uh, and then the rest of these buildings, you just make them um, springs, okay? Which I keep one at seven so that I can do uh, I can do construction stuff to create helps for guild members when I need to. Although I don't use it as much anymore because I have I have alts that it's much cheaper with resources to do because my this account will eat through food really quickly, so I'll waste a bunch of food trying to do it on this account. So, um, with buildings, the reason that I only say one spire is because to a certain, like, like the, uh, like the barracks, to a certain point, like, it's just, it's over, if, if you're doing it longer than one day, there's no point. You can easily create a routine where you can start it up once a day, right? I think mine, my, uh, my stuff is like 19 hours which is almost one day or something like that. So I literally just merge packs once a day. Um, I don't need multiple spires. No one really does need multiple spires unless you're trying to get through it really, really fast. And you're, but at that point, you'd have to spend a lot of money, right? Uh, same thing with Jim. Uh, you can only train one familiar at a time, all right? If you have multiple gems, you can do one familiar per gem. But merging packs takes so long as it is that you will probably train your troop or uh, troops. You'll probably train your familiars faster than you can merge the packs. And not only that, but you can train them faster than you will get fragments. Okay, so uh, it's pointless to have multiple gems and when you're free to play, it's pointless to constantly deconstruct, like demolish, and then construct buildings back over and over and over. It takes too long to do. Uh, even at even at my strength, I probably could do it in a reasonable amount of time. But if I were to say wipe all of my infirm, like delete all of my infirmaries, and then replace them with manners, it just takes too long. Like it take me, it would take me one to two weeks just for one building right especially if I want to get it to 25 like that's gonna take forever just 25 takes like what one or two days maybe three days to con to construct and that's with the current percentages that I have like it's ridiculous there's I mean unless you're spending tons and tons of money like like uh, a youtuber has spends like hundreds of thousands of dollars every month on this game like it's pointless like don't do it all right it's going to hurt you more than you think so uh familiars end game uh one spire one gem and multiple springs all right so uh that's pretty much how i set up all of my castles unless they're hypers um if you guys have any questions for me uh comment below and uh hope you learned something today peace out guys